in the, the beginning of the pandemic, uh, women I've talked to were really in fight or flight mode, you know, figuring out how they're gonna manage work and having kids at home and caring for aging parents that were now at high risk. Women in general, everybody has been, but women have really just been tough and, and heroes and <laughs> making all of these things work. We don't know statistics for Iowa specifically yet, um, but we do know that um, our unemployment rate is at 3.1% as of last month. And we don't know how many women have just altogether dropped out of the workforce and are not reflected in that unemployment rate. Iowa women have the highest percentage of workforce participation rate in the country tied with Minnesota, which means we have more women in the workplace here in Iowa than any other state in the country. Specifically here in Johnson County, 76% of our women are in the workplace. We need um, that uh, female perspective, a diverse uh, perspective in the workforce because um, spreading out economic um, equality throughout our communities means that nobody's being left behind and it also adds to our GDP, right? So if you're looking at it from a business perspective, when you have everyone participating in the workforce, if you have everybody educated, trained, um, engaged, in whatever industry that they're in. That means that we are thriving and we are growing as an economy, as opposed to if we're leaving a whole segment of our population out of the equation. And you know, this is not just women, this is you know, diversity in the workplace. But specifically for women, we find that um, when women are in the workplace and they are able to grow and thrive in their careers, that money gets translated back into their children, and children then thrive and grow. The friends of mine who are, who have kids and are working, even though they may have very, very supportive and very involved and engaged partners, I would say 100% of my friends took you know, a very strong majority of child care or teaching responsibilities. You know, is it that they, that the couple thinks that she's better at it, that she's like better at cooking and that she's better at helping with the homework. So they have some kind of negotiation and he says, well, I would do it, but you're just better at it, honey, than I am. I'll give one example. When I was sharing with a male colleague and kind of telling him before school started, like, I don't know how we're going to manage this. Um, just sort of venting to him, and he's someone I'm close with. He was like, well, can't you just work after the kids go to bed? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I can if I never want to sleep. We mainly think of school as a, a source of education, and it certainly is. But for children who are especially under the age of 12, it also is a place where we know that they are safe and cared for um, while parents work. We noticed that affordable child care was one of those issues that really wasn't being addressed. It wasn't being amplified. It was still seen as a woman's issue as opposed to an infrastructure issue. Child care is about $1,200 to $1,400 a month in Johnson County. So we set up just a network uh, that we were calling Neighborhood Nests. So the nests were nurturing every student together safely. So these were sites throughout Johnson County uh, for school-aged children where parents could um, drop their kids off and know that they were safe, they were getting logged on. Um, likewise, we also set up a Neighborhood Nests scholarship fund for the youngest kids to go to childcare providers um, that had so much space now because children were being pulled out of childcare. 
And very early on, we set up a um, kind of a concierge service for, um, for healthcare workers that were in need of child care. So at that time in, in you know March, April last year, we had a lot of child care centers in the area close. Parents were um, uneasy about sending their kids to child care because that was another big thing. It wasn't just access. It was also kind of that uncertainty about the, the, the risks of sending your child. It could be that women who took time off when they look to re-enter are going to have to start lower. People really understand if women choose to take time off to take care of their kids for a period of time. And I don't think that excludes women from ever getting a job again by any means. But those are hours um, or pay potential that you've lost um, to do a really noble thing and really important thing. And then there's also the retirement component of just, you know, if you're in a job that contributes to your retirement, that's a period of time that you don't have those earnings as well. COVID has sh like shined a light on the fact that women do a lot of extra work in the family that they are not paid for and not uh, recognized for. Words of encouragement that I would have for uh, moms, especially young moms right now, is um, just take, take the pressure off yourself. <laughs> um, I think that there are an older generation of women uh, in the workplace that are uh, advocating for those young moms. Um, my kids are 19 and 16, so I, I have spent a lot of time thinking about what would it have been like if my kids were two and five and or you know young kids and I think there's a lot of empathy out there for for moms 2022 when we're all back in the workforce I, I think that there is an older generation of women that are really gonna grab a hold of this issue and pull women up and say um, okay we had a rough go of it and now let's get back to work <laughs>